like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars this is what happened to jesus as he prayed this is what will happen to any believer as you pray as he prayed the fashion of his countenance transformation a weak you can become a strong you when you pray now isn't it interesting that the holy spirit told ezekiel what to say the bones had what the holy spirit was saying and they did not move until ezekiel spoke i prophesied as i was commanded he said and there was a sound so every time we prophesy in prayer there is a sound a sound elijah stood in one place not in a radio station not in a tv station and he shot down rain listen if you learn what i'm about to show you tonight the spiritual forces that trouble the purposes of god over boston will be in trouble after tonight i want to give you three keys that can transit any believer from a weak spiritual state until you become a person of power and a person of grace are you ready number one the first key is called a systemic prayer life the first key that builds believers to become people of power and stature in the spirit a systemic prayer life notice the expression systemic if your prayer life is not systemic it will be ineffective and it will be void of the ability to build you. Systemic. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Please say that after me. The hour of prayer. One more time. The hour of of prayer there was a discipline that was invested to their prayer life it was called the hour of prayer dedicated to prayer the hour of prayer most believers pray but aside from praying and miss we are not consistent in our prayer we have an emotional approach to prayer so when matters get bad and it looks like we're in trouble, we quickly develop some kind of crash system and we shout at the gates of heaven. And once it looks like there's a little solution, then we leave everything. Your prayer life, the power in prayer is in its consistency. Especially when we're talking about prayer as a tool for building you. I'll talk a bit on prayer. It's important we understand this. The key to benefiting from prayer is to create a strategy for consistency. The key to benefiting from prayer is to create a strategy for consistency. Most believers are not consistent in their prayer. Can I give you four assignments of prayer? Maybe you want to write that down. According to scripture, there are four assignments of prayer. Number one, the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation. This is the most important assignment of prayer. Did you know that the average believer's understanding of prayer is just as a means for receiving things from God? The major assignment of prayer is as a tool for your personal growth and transformation luke chapter 9 please and verse 29 are we learning that means a major part of your prayer should not just be about asking things but engaging for your spiritual development this is why he gave us the prayer language as he prayed we're still together the fashion of his countenance was altered talk to me and his raiment became white and glistening this is what happened to jesus as he prayed this is what will happen to any believer as you pray 
as he prayed the fashion of his countenance transformation a weak you can become a strong you when you pray a timid you a carnal you can become a spiritual you you can pray out weakness pray out limitation most believers have not used prayer as a tool for their development show me a man who has been methodically mentored to understand the ministry and the role of prayer in his development and has obtained grace to engage i show you a powerful christian in the making now i hope you know that when the disciples of john became the disciples of jesus they noticed that jesus's prayer produced power and they came to him and said teach us to pray their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was that there was no power in their prayer everything he said came to pass what was he saying what was he doing you must spend a major part of your prayer life praying in the spirit when you want to grow listen carefully you must spend a major part of your prayer time praying in the spirit. Most believers do not use prayer as a tool for growth and transformation. It says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive the prayer language, not power. That means there is a relationship between that prayer language and the promised power. Am I right on that? If I tell you that I'm bringing you a hot meal and I bring you, say, a blue gift, it means you must open to find out there must be a connection between that gift I gave you and the promise I left you. Probably the meal must be inside. Am I wrapped? Are we together? If I promise you a thousand dollars and then I hand over a bag, it is only wise to open that bag because the thousand dollars will most likely be in there as cash, as some voucher, as a check. Am I right on that? So if Jesus says you will receive power and what you receive was tongues, you there has to be a relationship between engaging that prayer language and the release of power yes. hallelujah listen i'm saying this because i'm going to give you an assignment in righteousness you are going to work with the holy spirit to create a systemic pattern of consistent prayer from tonight yes. believe me you walk this for one month two months three months praying consistently every day for the purpose of edification and growth and watch the wonder you become do you believe this so the first assignment of prayer is as a tool for growth and transformation number two the second assignment of prayer is as a platform for obtaining requests and making petitions obtaining requests and making petitions obtaining requests and making petitions god is father god is a giver we can obtain requests we can make petitions mark chapter 11 please and verse 24 here's what the bible says and what things soever ye desire is that in your bible it says when ye pray so there is a relationship between desires and prayer it says believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them desire prayer believing receiving having desire prayer believing in prayer receiving in prayer having in experience this is a dynamics so prayer is a tool for making petitions and obtaining requests the bible even says ask matthew 7 7 and you shall receive is that still in your bible 
seek and you will find knock it says and it shall be opened unto you i like verse 8 for everyone prayer is for everyone for everyone not some everyone that asketh in prayer receiveth it says ye have not because ye ask not are we still together so assignment number one of the prayer ministry is for your growth edification and transformation number two as a tool a platform to obtain requests and to make petitions ready for number three the third assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is as a tool for creating your reality prayer when in combination with the spoken word helps the believer create their reality i like this the bible says even god who quickened the dead and called those things that be not i hope you know that the believer is a co-creator with god you are given the responsibility of designing your destiny using the creative power of the spoken word in prayer this must form a major part of your prayer life not just to ask speak son of man can these bones live he says only thou knowest and then he said prophesy speak to someone say prophesy, prophesy. one more time say prophesy, prophesy. Hmm. now isn't it interesting that the Holy Spirit told Ezekiel what to say. The bones had what the Holy Spirit was saying and they did not move until Ezekiel spoke. I prophesied as I was commanded, he said, and there was a sound. So every time we prophesy in prayer, there is a sound. A sound, a sound, a sound, a sound of healing, a sound of restoration, a sound of revival, a sound of mending bones now listen you would look at a valley a valley that was full of bones you would see the one bone here the other bone there the possibility for order was still there even in the midst of chaos but not under every condition the moment the prophet prophesied the bone came from everywhere to everywhere the bone can mean the problem the bone can mean whatever you desire connecting itself until there arose an exceeding great army can i tell you you do not know the kind of power you have as far as shaping your possibilities and creating your destiny is concerned until you know how to use scripture with the intelligence of an artist you begin to draw your possibilities have you watched an artist paint from nothing swiping the brush left to right at various angles not making sense at the beginning sometimes inverting the picture ah and then when he's done he turns it back this is your destiny so when you begin to make declarations like the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of are we together now yes sir the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept i waked for the lord sustain me a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will i see and behold the reward of the wicked the bible says they that be planted in the house of the lord they will flourish in the courts of our god that in old age they will be fat and flourishing that is my destiny that is your assignment in the place of prayer to use the spoken word and push it with faith and begin to redefine your possibilities when men say there is a casting down for me my declaration is that there is a lifting up yes sir believe this this is how kings reign he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm i'm planted in the house of god i flourish in the court of our god in old age i am fat and flourishing no devil would take my life before my time in the name of jesus i have a covenant of life 
did the bible not say if they obey and serve him they will spend their years in prosperity their days in prosperity their years in pleasure I expect to be favored in any nation regardless my background because the Bible says watch this it says let them shout for joy let them say continually let the Lord be magnified which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants it is in my Bible that I am blessed in the city blessed not just in Nigeria I am blessed in America I define my possibilities listen I'm teaching you how believers become matured. I cannot be rejected. Not by any nation. Not by any people group. The hand of God is upon my life. I have the covenant of Abraham working in me. It says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is what I believe. This is my reality. listen now do you believe this now you see the requirement for prophecy is a thorough understanding of the promises of God you cannot speak prophetically in ignorance because God is only committed to what he has said not what you want it is only when your desire becomes what God has said that it looks like God is answering you you see what God is answering is not really your desire he's honoring his word that you have found and connected to your desire because in this kingdom if God has not spoken his anointing has no ministry the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word does not become a lie in your life Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. God only visits as he has said. He only does as he has spoken. Did you get that? So if he has not said it, and if you cannot find where he has said it, there is no big for performance in your life. The third ministry of prayer is someone learning I refuse to be defeated not when I have this advantage in my life no 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 I define my possibilities I don't wait for life to happen to me that is a dangerous adventure I can't risk my life I have just one lifetime I'm not going to put one lifetime at the mercy of wicked people, wicked systems. No. Job already taught us a lesson by being silent. I would be silent. I have to participate in every outcome that happens in my life. No devil will make any discussions and then I become a victim of operations of spirits and territorial powers. No. No discussions were concluded about job and the bible says on a certain day the third assignment of prayer you see that for many of you your life has gone inconsistent with your desires because you are just allowing life to just happen now when you leave a farm without planting something will grow what is it called one more time we define weeds in agriculture as unwanted plants, at least with respect to your farm. Unwanted. Hmm. Unwanted. Every tree that has not been planted by my father, it is my responsibility to uproot it. Are we together? So you find out that you're roaming over Boston and looks like doors are closed everyone hates you come on don't go around attracting sympathy lock yourself you have an advantage the prayer ministry you pray in the spirit and you stretch your hands like the priest that you are and begin to make prophetic scripture based declarations here's what the bible says is anyone afflicted james 5 13 it says let him pray now watch this then it says let him call for the elders of the church my goodness i like this watch this it says and let them pray help that person under the anointing 
anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Read verse 15 and never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Hold on. And by the power of prayer, the Lord shall raise him up. Prayer raises men up. The Lord shall raise him up through the prayer of faith. Raise him up from a nobody and put you in a global scale. Do you believe this? Listen, do not let contemporary society make it look like prayer is just an activity of fanatical Christians. You would be doing your destiny a disservice. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So number one, praying in the spirit for your edification, growth, and transformation. Number two, using scripture-based prayer as a basis for obtaining requests and making petitions. Unto thee that answers prayer, the Bible says, shall all flesh come. Number three, creating possibilities in your life is like an art of legislating things you are enacting laws in the spirit and establishing them the bible says where the word of a king is there is power it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified don't be silent mm -mm. give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem as a praise number four the fourth and final assignment of prayer is for warfare and prophetic intercession. I hope you believe in warfare. <laughs> Let me define for you what I call warfare. Warfare is a prophetic system of establishing the word of God and establishing the will of God over lives, destinies, and territories. Warfare is concerned not just with fighting, but establishing realities that have been finished, making them manifest through the force of intercession. I'm going to be teaching you that because this is how you would take your territory. All the other aspects, excellence, leadership, value, you already have it. That missing ingredient is what I came to show you. We are learning from you the other aspects because we've gotten warfare and intercession well. Then we've left excellence, we've learned leadership, and so we are coming to borrow that. But in exchange, we're importing to you how to exert dominion upon territories using the power of priesthood. Elijah stood in one place, not in a radio station, not in a TV station, and he shot down rain. Listen, if you learn what I'm about to show you tonight, the spiritual forces that trouble the purposes of God over Boston will be in trouble after tonight. You see, Daniel was an intelligent leader. And Daniel understood the power of prayer. Now, before the king, he was a valuable person, excellent, intelligent, an administrator. The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. But... All that was strengthened because of his prayer. So the spirits of the Medes and the Persians, they needed to investigate what was responsible for this man's excellence and dexterity in life. They traced it to his prayer. Can you imagine that these spirits moved through men to enact one law against one man for just 30 days? They came through the angle of politics and governance to say for the next 30 days, no man would offer prayer to any God king. Sign this. And if anyone were found doing that, he would be thrown to the lion's den. The Bible says, Daniel opened the window. Do you know why he opened the window facing Jerusalem? Because when Solomon was dedicating the temple, he entered a covenant with God that everyone who faced Jerusalem offering prayer, that the Lord should hearken to them. And Daniel began to pray, and when they found him, they threw him at the lion's den, you know the story, and he refused to die. I didn't say he didn't die, he refused to die. If life is a choice, 
than death. Are we together? You want to become a powerful believer? You must pray. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus I, obtain grace I obtain grace to pray. To pray. One more time. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus I, obtain grace I obtain grace to pray. To pray. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute before we continue? In the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to pray. I obtain grace to pray. I obtain grace to pray. Prayerlessness, you let me go in the name of Jesus. Prayerlessness, you let me go in the name of Jesus. Obtain grace. Hallelujah. Watch out for the second segment and the third segment or the second and third segment of this video will be posted shortly in this channel. Um, we really hope you are blessed by this and you guys spot something, you use back something. Remember the assignment God servant gave in the sermon that from tonight, tonight that you're hearing this for the first time, which is 5th of April where I am or wherever you are, whatever date it is, you should begin a midnight intercession to build your spiritual life, just praying in tongues, to grow in the spirit, not, to, not necessarily asking, right? Not necessarily asking for anything. The, 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 the power in praying in tongues is, is a systemic one. It's something that promises to give power. Praying in tongues is not just because you want to receive something from God. Praying in tongues is something that gives power. It's the road to power. And most times, situations and circumstances answer to power. Hallelujah. They answer to power. So welcome to the commentary section. My name is Scholar David Goodman and I bring you commentaries on sermons that were shared by God's servant, Apostle Jeffrey Sermon. Sharing with you the way I got from this sermon. Also sharing with you highlights of the sermon as it ministered to me. And sharing with you ways to apply this sermon in your life and the way to be productive and work out for you. So if you like this kind of thing, please give this video a huge thumbs up. Share this video to someone so that they can bless their life. But let's continue. So in this very sermon, my own take home is that I should be intentional. Intentionality is what will make you prioritize your prayer life. Every time we don't prioritize our prayer life, there's something missing with intentionality. We are intentional about feeding our flesh, our body. We plan for it subconsciously. This is how we're supposed to be intentional about, about building our spiritual lives. And see, there's something about praying. It just changes the level of a believer. You start have your dream life, number one, begins to change. You begin to see things. God begins to speak to you. I pray that God helps us because just this morning, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me about this prayer or something. I said, do you see how you're intentional about this, this, this area of your life? That if you've not done this, if you've not done this for two days, three days, it begins to affect you. If you do need that, oh, I have to do this because it's a duty, it's an obligation, it's part of my life. That is the same way the hunger we should have for prayer, it should not be missed. And this starts from a conscious decision. Because if you want to grow from a weak to a strong Christian, you can't take prayer out of it. And prayer is not funny. It's not a fun fact. Just like how you don't just sit down and food comes on top of you on top of your table. You have to go and prepare the food. Think of what to cook. Go and cook it. Go to the market. Make intentional moves. That's the same way you make intentional moves when you want to build your prayer life. You must make intentional moves by setting your alarm. You must make intentional moves by sleeping on time. You must make intentional moves by waking up before the time, by washing your face. Whatever it takes to be in that place of prayer, you do it. Because it's the discipline that starts first. You start mechanically, then the Holy Spirit helps you along the line. According to Apostle Romeo, I he used to say it that first of all, you start mechanically, and the Holy Spirit assists you along the line. So I want to encourage you 
I already wrote down my own. I didn't even know I was going to share this message, this sermon today. As I came across the sermon, I felt a strong leading in my heart that this is the sermon I should share. I was supposed to complete the part, uh, the second segment of the other sermon I shared like yesterday. So, but today I was just led to share this one. And I was ministered uh, um, to by this sermon because it touched me. There are some things I abandoned and I quickly had to go back to it. Because I know you cannot grow outside prayer and word study. You can't grow outside. These two things are very paramount. Prayer, fasting. Hallelujah. But I hope that this message ministered to you. I hope you will share it to somebody so that you can bless their life. And I hope you will apply. Because my take home from this whole meeting is intentionality. Yes. You want power, you have to be intentional. Just like you want to grow healthy, you want to live a healthy lifestyle, you have to be intentional. The spiritual life is not any different. As a human being, you are a human trying to attain the things of the spirit. You have to subject yourself to some discipline in order for the spirit to take over. But let, let me remind you of something. But when it comes to the spiritual life, <laughs> you, 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 you plug into a higher power, which is the Holy Spirit. Because on, on, on our own, we can do nothing. On our own, we can do nothing. It is God that works in us, both to will and to do. So we have to plug into the power of the Most High God. If not, <laughs> sleep will carry you when you want to pray, when you want to study your Bible. I hope you are blessed by this. Do well to like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. Let us know where you are coming from, and we'll see you when we post the part two of the video.